Hi, many, many apologies for being 20 minutes late. I was with my um, gene teachers on my um, BTEC Level 6 Advanced Clinical Massage course. Um, and we're all a bit of talkers. So, uh, so it was meant to finish at 12 and it's rolled over. So many apologies. So what do I have in store for you lot today? Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is um, show you a Buteco method technique. It's called the small breath holds. Um, and then we are going to look at some arm movement, release two muscles that um, raise and lower the arm, and then kind of feel the difference in a beautiful side stretch. I, I love a side stretch. It's really opening for the body and enhances your breathing by um, opening the intercostal muscles. Well, I'm actually making them more kind of pliable so they respond to our breathing more effectively by contracting and releasing as they need to. Um, so let's start with the breathing. So the small breath holds is really suitable for anybody. Um, so in the Buteco method, um, one aspect it looks at is the biomechanic, bi biochemistry sorry, of the breath and the increasing of carbon dioxide in the body so that the haemoglobin, which is a protein in the blood, releases more oxygen. Now, to raise carbon dioxide levels in the blood, we have to hold the breath after an exhalation. And that can cause us to feel a, a sense of suffocation. And we kind of, we need that so that we can change the biochemistry in the body, so that we stretch the receptors and we become more tolerant to raising levels of carbon dioxide. So a strong breath hold wouldn't be suitable for people that are in ill health or have panic or anxiety disorders. But this technique can be, is suitable for everybody and because it just kind of touches the edge, it just taps on the window of feeling um, a breath hold. So the first thing we need to do is, first of all, just start by noticing your normal breath. So try not to change it, which can be really, really tricky when you start to focus on your breath. The breath in the Buteco method is through the nose. So do close the mouth and just notice your easy, relaxed breath flowing through the nostrils. Like I said, do nothing to it. So just notice its speed, its depth, how quiet your breath is. Is there a natural movement to the abdomen? Is there a natural movement to the chest? Stillness or movement to the shoulders? Does your breath feel easy or does it feel laboured? And this will depend, maybe you've been sitting for a while or maybe you've just kind of sat down after you may, may have gone for a run and so maybe your breath is very different from your, well it will be very different from your restful breath. Now, you're going to take two breaths and following an exhalation with the mouth closed and the body relaxed, you're going to pinch your nose closed for between three to five seconds. So I'm going to demonstrate this just a couple of times and then you can do this for yourself. If you pinch the nose for five seconds and the inhalation that follows is sharp, and uncomfortable, you know, you start to feel kind of on edge, then hold the breath for less. So you want, I want you to feel comfortable and at ease with this breath. So I'll just demonstrate a few times. So breath is through the nose. It's a natural inhalation and exhalation.
So maybe start doing that. And it might be that the first few times the breath that follows is a little bit sharper and that will just be you getting used to this technique and getting used to that sense of holding the breath with the lungs empty. And if you've never done that before, it can feel, you know, it's an unusual sensation, um, which is why you can always reduce the count. So we're gonna just do this for, we normally practice the small breath holds for four minutes. So whilst I'm talking, because I can't see you, unfortunately, your lovely faces, um, I'll just talk a little bit about it. So you're taking two relaxed breaths at the end of the exhalation with the mouth closed, you're pinching your nose and you're holding the lungs empty for up to five seconds. You then release the hold on the nostrils and the breath that follows, the two breaths-ish, maybe three, that follow, so it's about a 10 second space in between, you want to be just as relaxed as though you're not doing these breath holds at all. So just find your place with this. So I'm hoping you're practicing this. So I'll just talk a little bit about it. So the small breath holds can be used if you're starting to feel a bit stressed or irritable, you can use these small breath holds and very quickly they will resolve your irritability, partly because of the oxygen being released in your blood. So that will kind of um, bring you, it turns the vagal nerve, so it brings you towards that lovely state of rest and relaxation. The small breath hold practice that some of you are practicing now, um, also, as the carbon dioxide rises in the blood, more oxygen is released. And therefore, you'll find that after four minutes of this practice, you're better able to concentrate, to concentrate sorry, on the task in hand. The small breath hold is really, really great if you have panic disorder, anxiety disorder, or asthma, or coughing, or wheezing. If you do the small breath holds, for four, about four minutes at the very start. So when you realize that you're moving towards a state of anxiety or you're moving towards your asthma attack, then do this small breath hold, these small breath holds for four minutes and do it regularly in your day. The more we expose ourselves to these practices, the more efficient we become. Um, so if you've just joined me now, then do look back on the small breath hold technique that I've been teaching. It, it's a real benefit for, for anybody, you know, it, even those of us that are pretty well balanced with our breaths, but um, you know, we still get out of kilter, we still get irritable and, and anxious about things, and it's a really good exercise to do. So I'd love your feedback if you bring this and um, the small breath holds into your life. Um, so let's move on a little bit. So we're gonna do a little bit of movement Obviously, the best movement would be to get up from your seat and walk around, which I hope you will do at some point today and go and take in the glorious sun and blue skies. But we're just going to look at um, a couple of movements of the arms. So what I'd like you to do is just allow the arms to hang heavy by the sides of your body. Just really feel that, that there's ease to the shoulders and just try and keep the shoulders down from the ears. And you're just simply going to float the arms up it might not be simple for some of you that have shoulder impingements, and then float the arms down. So just kind of feel how easy it is, whether there's tightness or soreness. So for me, when I lower my right arm, there's a judder, so it just means that the pattern of muscles that bring my arms into extension are a bit out of kilter, but there's no pain. So just observing. And then what I want you to do is bring the arms up and down by the sides of the body. Now, as you bring your arms to about 90 degrees, do turn the palms up and you'll notice you have greater range of movement. And then you bring the arms about 90 degrees down and turn the palms down. So again, just do that a few times. Keep the shoulders heavy. So really feel like the arms are just like floating. There's a real sort of softness. Now, the two muscles that we're gonna look at are the 
pec major, so the big chest muscle, and the latissimus dorsi, which is a back muscle. So it, it kind of looks like a big kite across the back, but actually both of them attach to the arm. So this, the chest muscle and the big back muscle, latissimus dorsi, do these actions. So they help with these actions amongst other muscles. So front armpit, back armpit. The front armpit, we can access the pec major, which is pretty simple. We can access it just by putting our hand on our chest. But we're going to just elevate your arm, keep the shoulder heavy, you know, and if you can't elevate it to here, because you do have a shoulder impingement, which clinical massage therapy can help you with, to contact me, you can just lower your arm. You can always be supporting your arm on, on, a, on a desk or a table. And, you know, just really softly, just feel the inner armpit. So just gently compress and you can really kind of try and get into the armpit. Um, with these compressions, if you feel anything that pulses, then just come off of it. It's pretty simple. You're not going to do yourself any damage. Well, you will do if you keep compressing the pulsy bit. So you're just exploring that tissue. Just like you were softly squeezing toothpaste out of a um, tube, that's the word. So start maybe from the bottom of the armpit and just gently squeeze finger and thumbs together. And you can relax the arm down if you want to. If you raise it, you get more access to the armpit, that's all, so you can play around with your arm. And as you gently squeeze and compress the tissue together, you might find a sore spot or you might not. If you find a sore spot, wait and hold for about 10 to 12 seconds. You don't have to over squeeze as well. Don't cause yourself pain. And just notice what happens. So these are, this is trigger point therapy. It's really simple, just uses compression. And we're finding adhesions, knots within the skeletal um, muscles. And sometimes compression helps to release that the knots within the tissue. And then you're just gonna move along. And as well as moving along, you can move down and you can move up. Just take your time, always taking your time. When you find that sore spot, you wait and hold. The breath that you use is light, it's low, it's gentle, through the nose. So even if you find a real sore spot that's causing you pain, if it was causing a 10 out of 10 pain, then I would back away. Just come off, just move down a little bit. And just notice how that feels. Now, I've had my, my fingertips like you guys um, in my sweaty armpit, and my fingertips are now moving pretty far up, which is a great thing because I can access more of that pec major muscle. And actually, the more we go in so that you can feel the ribs, perhaps, then you're getting more to the pec minor, the muscle that sits underneath the pec major. So remember, you've got two sides. I'm not going to do the two sides with you, but do balance yourself out. If you've done one side, just notice a difference. So for me, much freer. I can feel that I've had my fingertips in my armpit. Now the lat muscle, the back armpit, just raise your arm as, com as a comfortable amount. And then again, you can feel, so this time you're going to have your so opposite hand, you're going to have your thumb in. And first of all, just have a little play around, you know, feeling, so for me, I come higher up towards my shoulder. Yeah, that, that's kind of tighter. And just have a little feel of just, just gently squeezing. And then you're gonna do the same thing. You can relax the arm down, but if you wanna get higher up in the armpit, you've gotta elevate, you might want to support the elbow. So again, you're just compressing the tissue. And when there's an area of pain under the finger or under the thumb, you wait and hold for 10 to 12 seconds. You're always inquiring, like, is that, has that pain lowered? Has it increased? Kind of what's going on? And then you move around a bit. So you're really grasping, you know, you can get lots of tissue there. So make sure you're not just pinching the skin, you know, you really are getting into that armpit and grasping the tissue, the back armpit, part of the lat, lat muscle, latissimus dorsi. 
and I'm going to move on but you would spend just much more time and just noticing the tissue change under your fingertips especially the thumb in the armpit you know the more time you spend the more time that the tissue releases and soften just by simple compression so of course you would do pec major and the latissimus dorsi on both sides so because we've done that, now let's go back to the movements that we did before. Keep the shoulders nice and heavy and float the arms up and bring the arms down. Just do that a few times. So heavy arms. And do you notice any difference, the difference to that movement? Does it feel easier? Is there less strain in the chest muscles? Is there more freedom to the arm movement? And then again, you're gonna bring the arms up to the side. Remember, you can spiral the arm. So as you bring the arm, imagine my arms at the side, coming up through the side of the body. Remember, you can't see my hands, but it's basically getting to about 90 degrees and I turn the palm up and then I can get more range of movement. As I bring it down, then I float the palm down. So you're just doing that a few times and because we've worked the tissue, we've released the trigger points within the pec major and the latissimus dorsi muscle, you might feel a smoother movement, maybe just more expansive within the chest area and within the lats. So let's just finish off with a stretch using the arm muscle. So. You're just very, very simply, I'm gonna mirror you. So you're gonna float your right arm up and you're gonna reach for the corner of the room. So we did this last week. Now don't bring the arm back like this. That really isn't particularly helpful for the shoulder. And you can hear that my breath has just gone all the way up into my chest. You want the arm to be in front of the face just a little bit and just drop the shoulder down. So you've plugged the arm bone into the arm and the elbow can be locked, we're not weight bearing. And your breath is still going to be nice and light and gentle. It's low. So I use the word low and deep rather than full. You are not going. You are keeping the breath soft and light, but you're encouraging the breath low into the diaphragm, into the side ribs. So as you breathe in, you're going to... Take the breath into the side rib and you're going to reach. And as you breathe out, just soften. So you can kind of see my fingertips, tips. They come out of shot a little bit. And then I'll just, there's that natural recoil of the body on the exhalation. We're going to add a little rotation here. So on the exhalation, I want you to softly, the pubic bones, the very front of the pelvis, tuck the pubic bone under and you'll feel the lower back start to round. And then you're going to rotate. So the chest starts to look towards the floor and now the fingertips reach diagonally down. And then on the inhalation, you're going to come back up to the side. So exhale, tuck pubic bone. The lower back's gonna open, rotate the spine so the breastbone starts to look down towards your thigh and the floor, and you're still reaching with your fingertips. Softly breathe in. And then tuck and reach and spiral as you breathe out. Now we'll do that one more time. And the next time you're in that rounded, rotated position, Direct the inhalation to the lower back. Again, light, soft breathing, but low. And feel the expansion of the lower back as you focus the breath there. Maybe also taking the attention of the breath, so directing the breath between the shoulder blades, because your right shoulder blade would have moved around your rib cage. And then come up. Breathing out here, then as you breathe in, spiral the arm and the heart towards the ceiling. Exhale back to center. Breathe in and reach. And then exhale, allow the arm to draw you back to the center. Lovely. So just notice the difference. So um, 
Your right side probably feels a bit more alive than your left side. And what about the right rib cage? So definitely for me, I feel more long, more open. So with your left arm, float it up on the exhale. And then on the inhale, reach for the corner. So it's a bit diagonal, but the shoulder blade doesn't have to come up like this. Find some softness, that heavy shoulder still, heavy shoulder. You're gonna use the low and light inhalation, directing it to the left lower ribs and into the waist. As you breathe in, you're gonna reach. And as you breathe out, you soften. So you're not forcing the softening, you're not actually pulling yourself out, we're just using the breath, the natural exhalation to soften us, the natural lengthening of the spine as we breathe in. Your breath is easy, it's directed low, but it's not high volume, it's not a deep, it's not a full breath, it's a low deep breath. And then let's add on that rotation. So the pubic bone's gonna tuck, so the pubic bone starts to look up towards the chest, you rotate the chest, so the chest starts to look towards your thigh or the floor, and the hand now reaches diagonally down, and it will draw the shoulder blade away from the spine. And then you breathe in, back to your side stretch, reaching, and you breathe out, tucking, rounding, rotating, reaching. Do this a few times. Breath is easy. It's gentle, it's light, and it's focusing down onto the lower ribs. Now the next time you find yourself in this rounded flex position, direct the inhalation to the lower back or the space between the shoulder blades. And your next inhale, come back up to the center, Exhale, soften. One more inhalation. Soften on the exhale. Now this inhalation, roll the arm. So the hand looks at the ceiling, breastbone reaches up, and then the exhalation, recoil back to the center. Inhale to reach and lengthen. Exhale, allow that left arm to bring you back up to the center. Oh, and just notice how you feel, hopefully a little bit more balanced, that you feel like you've opened the chest, opened up the chest, opened up the shoulders, arms might feel a little alive, breath might be lower, and hopefully if you've joined me from maybe a state of feeling kind of on edge or, or stressed or tired, that you actually feel more awake, that you can kind of crack on with the rest of the day. So if any questions arise from this live, um, be it straight away or in a, in a few days, something just occurs to you, maybe you've been doing some of the practice, do always please free to, feel free to contact me. Um, and if you like how I teach, then um, know that I do online yoga, currently, sadly, only online, but my clinical massage therapy is open so I work with clients who are in physical or mental pain that affects their everyday life. So that's, that's the client group that I can work with at the moment under lockdown. Um, from the 12th of April, I can open my doors to everyone, which is just gonna be amazing. Um, and these move with these classes, I can also teach um, kind of one-to-one -one or small groups and also corporate. So if you're part of a business or maybe you even run a business, um, then know that I can tailor these classes to you. So um, thank you for watching. Um, and hopefully 12 o'clock next week, I'll be on time. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.